I sense a prophecy in my spirit. The Lord says it doesn't matter how long it takes. He says, I'm standing by you. I'm standing by your side. I will be with you till you get there. Everything else will fail. The Lord said, I will not fail. I am the captain of your destiny. Natala katosha. Ekala mataka rugagayada. Shebra namazapa. Kolaba. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Bless him. He's here. 
We lay down every burden. We lay down every sorrow, every pain, every affliction. We cast it down at your feet. Kanamasipata, every concern, every anxiety. We lay it down at your feet, Emmanuel. We cast it down at your feet, Emmanuel. Your name be prayed. We worship you instead. We ignore our troubles. I don't care how many years you read the scripture determined to understand it today did you hear what I said it's like a caution I want to withdraw you from a mentality and a practice and hopefully it will save you and bless you economically and he spoke a parable unto them Luke chapter 12 verse 16 and 18 16 to 18 20 and 21 29 to 31 and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bands. Help us with the child. God bless you. I will pull down my bands and build greater. And there I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then those, then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And seek not ye what ye shall eat. Let's read this part. One to go. And seek, go, next verse please. And seek not ye what you shall eat. Go on. Go to verse 29. This person, are you with us? Ah, don't delay us. One to go. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, neither be of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that you have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. Matthew will say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things. That's the food and the drinks and clothes and all these things you need in life. They will be what? They will be added unto you. When you pursue what should be an addition, you will, not, you will catch shadows. You will end up with nothing. When what should be an addition becomes your pursuit, you have misplaced your priorities in life. And you have signed up for a life of sorrow. You've signed up as a candidate for the rat race. Not just that you will not win the race. You will become a rat. Just running. Running for what? Just to get the toys of life and things like that. I said in the first service and I'll repeat again. The economy of any nation determines the well-being of businesses, individuals and families in that nation or in that society. If the economy of Nigeria is good, even if you don't have a job, your life will be fairly okay. In America, 
when people say they are poor, I don't believe them. How can you say you are poor? You're not poor. A so-called poor man in America can eat four times a day, solid, and sleep well. They call welfare system, no be small. That's what they call food stamps. That's, then when, that's what they call unemployment, unemployment benefit or something like that. All manner of things, all manner of things. And you say you are poor in America, you're not poor. When I look at them, oh, this is a, prop, their problem is vices, drugs, and all those things. But to say you are poor, come to Nigeria. See poverty. Real one. Undiluted. Is somebody here I'm saying today? So the reason why it's difficult to find a person who is truly suffering in America is because the economy is good. The general economy. So it impacts everybody. America just a few months ago distributed stimulus. Is it stimulus? Stimulus package to every citizen that is earning below a certain amount of money. Each person got $1,200. As you may know, I got two. She got. Because you know we are earning there below Austin. The children got Austin. Their own was not 1,200. Your own is lower. They are warming up to do another one. I have not said anything. I just say, Lord, have your way. <laughs> yes. They are warming up another one. Going into trillions of dollars. They are not shaking. They are loaded. So the economy of a nation determines the well-being of the people. Your economy is as your personal economy, your micro economy is as good as the macro economy of Nigeria. You can have plenty of money. You have, you have 1,000 million naira. You know 1,000 million naira? And you are carrying body. Go to the exchange market. They will tell you how poor you are. When it's time to change that money to dollars, you'll be depressed. You understand what I'm saying? So, the economy of every nation is what determines the general well-being of people in that nation. So what, what ends up in your pocket, what ends up on your table at the end of the day is a product of government decisions, policies, and the outplay of de- uh, f- forces of demand and supply and all that. The economic play out, that's what ends up determining how you fare. It is such that failing to align with the government can put you, with government policies, can put you in very bad economic shape. You want to invest. You don't know that government policy is against that investment. You went and put your money there. It's gone. You want, to, you want to do this. You forget to obey certain rules. A government has recently said that you must have such and such paper. That investment is gone. And it's so gone you can't get it again. Because you fail to understand economic policies of the government. And so solid businessmen don't invest in environments where that have shaky government. When the government is shaky, unpredictable, they don't invest there. Government, they don't invest in societies where there's no rule of law. No rule of law such that if my money is trapped, I can use the law to get my money back. They don't invest in places where they don't respect the rule of law. They don't make investment in places where government change anyhow. And where government is erratic. That's the truth. So when you say, come and invest, direct foreign investment. How would they come and invest when our, our you know, Certain body language of our president at the time and utterances scared away a lot of businessmen. They packed their bags and they left. Because there had been a, there's been a history and now you are talking like this and they just saw that this man is yet to be a politician, he's still a military man. So they just carried their things and left. And so everything, bankers lost job, job lost everywhere. Airlines took off. Um, airline prices jacked up. What you could buy, I think I bought tickets for my wife and I before traveling to the U.S. for, I don't know how we bought one, two tickets for 200000 or something, I can't remember. It's cheap like that. Go and try if you can buy half ticket like that now. Terrible. Hallelujah. So if, you're, if your country is respected, you are automatically respected. When your country is despised, 
doesn't matter how much money you have, you are despised. So all of us are supposed to build the country, have the big picture, build national interests, not personal interests. When God puts you in a place of authority tomorrow as a politician in offices, please stop looking at your personal interests. What happens to us is that people get to a place of power and all they're looking at is their pocket. What they don't understand is that eventually you will become like the nation you destroyed. As we were just worshiping the Lord, the Lord said to me, he said to me, a poor man, supposed, whose main interest is not his stomach, but how to help others, is richer than a rich man whose main interest is his stomach and not how to be a blessing to others. There will soon be a swap. It's just a matter of time. That rich man is already poor and it's like he knows it. When somebody goes to a place of authority where there is privilege, you have control over resources, and you begin to steal like we have been seeing, you they say off the mic and things like that. When you see those kind of things, you are looking at people who are poor. Those are the real poor people. They are in the National Assembly. They are in the NDDC. They are in the presidency. They are in the state government houses. They are in the state government house of assembly. They are poorer than you. And I'm telling you now, so learn these things I'm telling you because there will soon be a change of button. That you will be in position of money and you are controlling wealth and it's not missing road into your pocket. In other nations, people don't steal government money. They make a name for themselves in government. As they step out, they make money. That's what they do. In fact, they resign after one year, after two years to go and make money because they want them everywhere. They want, they want them everywhere. But here, you see your family that is telling you this, if you like, don't be a house. If you like, don't be a That one you are going. Because you say you like to do right, right, right. Come back here and come and beg me money. My boss here, kill you. Somebody becomes a commissioner, people rally around him. Not necessarily for opportunity to do contracts. For him to steal and give them. Uncle, my father help you. My father help you. You are not a commissioner. Help me too. Whether they send money to... There are some states where the governors dry up money in certain departments. They don't see money. There is a state in this country where the commissioners were driving helocks. Bad guy. Bad governor guy. Is that governor not far from here? Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. A time will come when somebody becomes conscious and says, I pray for you that you represent us well. You will not come back with a bad name. You will make, impact. You make a difference in Jesus' name. We are praying for you. That should be it. No congratulations. Hey. hey. We go enjoy. Hey. You have already telling him, go and steal. You put him under pressure. You tell him, I have land to sell. Where will he get the money? Thief it. Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. Pursue national interest. Pursue the interest of everybody. Let, for me, your interest is more important than my interest. I want you to do well. It's because of you I don't sleep in the night. I wake up very early to pray and study. Sometimes health is challenging. I'm still staying up. I am pursuing your interest. When you make it and you blow, church has blown. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Kwaibo church. Let me talk. Shall I, should I talk my talk? Kwaibo church discipled a man. Sent him to become governor. And is upholding God. And the principle of God like no man business. I'm talking about our present governor. He's born again. He you know the agree. He's standing by those principles. How, where, what happened to us Pentecostal? That we don't disciple anybody. The few ones we disciple, they're in prison. Yes. They are locked up. They stay there to buy a PC ticket. They, they still stay there. Praise the Lord. Did I call anybody's name? When is your turn? When God opened the door for you, you go there and mess up. I, Pastor Ezekiel, I will pray you out. Believe me. Jesus, Shatwa, Gada, 
remove ah la ta back home. You will do well. Because some of you look at you don't look like it. I'm just telling you now. God will open doors for you. You will do well. You will represent God well. You will lift up the banner of Jesus Christ. People will enjoy because of you. When the righteous rule, the people rejoice. That shall be your portion. They say, at last, a man, a woman has come from God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Let me run very fast. So, business people don't invest without knowing the direction of the government. And the same is in, so in our kingdom. Our kingdom has a government. The king of our government is God himself. There are policies in this kingdom that you must understand to help your economy. I'm just telling you now. Stop all these things. I'm just praying that God will, that God will see me through. I'm just praying that God will help me. I'm just praying. I'm just praying. Find the policies of the kingdom. Align yourself with it. Align yourself with it. And you will be prosperous. You will do well. Find what decisions have been made in heaven. In his word. The policies are all here. Eh? The liberal soul shall be made fat. There are so many secret, dangerous policies here. That if you obey them, your life will advance. Hallelujah. Obey the whisperings of the spirit of God into your ear. Obey those whisperings. The Holy Ghost told me, start an account for welfare for the poor that I will send you away from time to time. Start an account. I say, okay, I'll start. I'll start. I'll start. Just keep saying, yes, we're passing. I'll start. I'll start. Lord, why am I not prospering? He was like, are you asking me? I say, start an account. Is somebody hearing me now? I'll start. I'll start. I'll start. Because God wants to send people to you. When the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. It means seek ye first the rule of God, the will of God, the rulership, the reign of God on the earth. So if this brother is hard hit, things are rough, and, and he can't pay rent, he's homeless, he's not doing well, and, and God makes me meet him, and maybe in that account, 10 million has already entered. I can call him, give him house rent, give him money to start business. And introduce myself. And the guy will wonder whether he is in this world. Or in another world. As far as he's concerned. He has seen God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That his, king, that is his kingdom come. Your kingdom come. God knows this brother has a challenge. And is not expecting the government to fix it. But God has kingdom citizens. Kingdom stakeholders. Who will not see such thing. And so what will he do? He's going to use me and fix it. Without doubt, he will know this must be God. And he will look for God. I heard somebody shout yesterday, you know, from our room. And I stood up to look. And I saw a young man convulsing, seriously convulsing, violently convulsing. That the people, this brain, they said the guy cannot even take his bath. All manner of nonsense. I said, why don't they take him to the hospital? They said they are using traditional herba. May the Lord forgive some of us with unnecessary herba. How would the herba affect the brain? So I told my wife, they will go to the hospital. I will pay for the bills. I will buy the drugs. The elder brother of that small boy was my gate man before my security. But it's now living close by. So the boy, I hear yesterday he hit his head and he was bleeding. I am a kingdom person near there. I can't take that nonsense. That devil is a bastard. That that boy will suffer like that. Not while I am there. That's why he positioned me there. And gave me access to the little thing he gave me access to. No wonder he said create that account. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whatever they are afraid of going to, they will go to the hospital. I will pay for it by the grace and the mercy of God. He doesn't have to be a child of God. He could even be a Muslim. But it's not everybody you preach to. It's, 
But if people are deaf, they are not blind. Their eyes can see the light. And then your light so shine. Men will not glorify you. They will glorify your father. So I'm talking is paining me. How would devil do that to that boy? That's useless, the young man. Hallelujah. We will lay hands from here. Doctors will give you injection from here. It will meet in the middle and there will be an explosion. That is having the heart of the father. I am here and I was driving back home one day and I saw a young man, one small boy, lying down with an empty tray. Apparently he was selling. Lying down like almost fainting, passing out. I said, what is it? I drove close to him. I said, what is the problem? He couldn't answer me. He was just breathing. I called my security. What is it? He said he was selling what, what, what he was selling. The man who was driving a car, see evil people, took everything and told him to give him change of what, whatever. While the man, well, I don't know, I think the man drove away with his goods and the money. Drove away. So the guy, knowing that he's dead, probably was looking for how to just die. Human beings driving a car. You wonder why he would die in the car and you will not know how he managed. So I asked him how much. Do you know that what he was, what he, the total market was exactly what I had in the car. I took and gave to him. Life came back and he was wondering as in what has just happened. You understand what I'm saying? The boy was just wondering what has just happened here now. So I drive, say, go home, go home, don't sell again. Go home. When God bless you money, you see the, the, what that man, that man in our text, a farmer, has normal, he knows what to expect every year. That whenever he plants, this is what comes in. He has 10 bands. He fills them up. And one day, one year, he's the thing produced like 100 times. He said, wow. He said, I will say to my soul, you have enough to eat for many years. I'll pull down this band and raise up more. And God said to him, you are a fool. You are a fool. He said, I'm going to take your life tonight. Who will eat all these things? Let me see how you come and eat for many years. The many years, who gives it to you? Is it not God that gives it to you? So there's a principle of overflow. Abbas, leave your face and listen to me. You have gone. That's how sleep will come. Praise the Lord. You open the windows of heaven. Now do what? Pour you out a blessing. So you will not have enough room. I used to ask myself, so is that no waste? <laughs> I, know t- I like to be practical with the Bible. Is that no waste? Then he says, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup run it over. Again, another waste. There's a principle of overflow. God satisfies you and he pours over to who? To people around you. It's not waste. It's a stage of being a blessing. He wants you to be a blessing. He wants you to stretch your hand. Anytime you have more money than you plan, please think about people. Did you hear what I said? That's a natural message God is sending to you. Anytime more money enters your hand than you envisaged. There's some things I can't tell you now. I will tell you later. Testimonies that are... Hmm? And when, when God gives you the breakthrough like this, bam, like one that happened yesterday, solid thing enter my account. Holy Ghost said, hey, so that project for a social person, half of it goes there plus your tight. That 60% has gone. What is left for me is 40%. And there are already plans on it. That's in God has plans. What's what I'm talking about now? So that money is not possessing you. God told him you are a fool. You are supposed to be a blessing. You always say, okay, I notice all those slums. I will sell some of these things and repair the slums. And then I will use some of it and feed them for, no, for one year. I will employ some of them. I will expand my farm, employ some of them. A, one of the airline owners in this country said something that really touched me. He said, 
He wanted to buy aircraft. He told one of his friends. The friend took him somewhere in the U.S., I'll be U.K., to buy a private jet. He said, it's not a private jet I'm looking for. He said, I'm looking for a commercial. I want to buy an airline. He said, what? what are you? He said, no, take me to who can sell me. So they finally took him to Houston. This man sells, you know. So the man said, why? He said, I want to create jobs. I want to employ people. Wow. So the man gave him a hug. And said, it's not normal with people from your country. People from your country who come here don't think like this. The man said to him, I will help you. Began to help him out to buy aircraft. So he can have, create jobs. In Maslow hierarchy of need. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You study it in Econs. That's if you paid attention, you know, because some of you, some of us didn't pay attention. Somebody write your exam. Somebody sat in class for you. So when we say Maslow, I'm born here, we know Maslow. You know, so it's just nothing. <laughs> in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, from down up, the first, 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 bottom, 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 the first needs of man is food, drink, clothes, shelter. Bottom, bottom. That is all those people want. But as they rise, that is no longer their concern. The topest is relevance. Relevance. How to make a difference. How to make a name or something. So if you are just, all you are thinking about how to eat food, you are poor and in the name of Jesus, come out of there. You may be there, but don't think there. Did you hear what I said? <clears throat> don't think there. I have a friend who were together in Naked, doing ministry work together. He didn't have a job, didn't have money. There's a camera I had, he was in it to snap people and they would pay, he would buy chairs for church. Our church was very young. He would snap, they pay, he buys chairs for church. Snap, they pay, he buys chairs for church. He's building his second house as we speak. And he has been working in a hotel. You see, it doesn't matter where you walk. God can bless you. His first house is a duplex. Massive. I went to his room. It looked like bigger than my own. I'll go and check it again. Because <laughs> it's not nice. Why his room be bigger than my own? I'm the senior. Hallelujah. I need to measure like Takes time. I just use my leg. So as we we're saying. <laughs> so I can know. Solid house in a solid neighborhood. He bought the land. He's about to build another one. He has built a church for God. A lot of it is money is inside. Big assembly from what I've been told. But he started by snapping. That's what he had. When they pay him, he will buy a chair. They pay him, he will buy it. You can be there, but your mind is not there. Physically, economically speaking, that's your level. But you are not thinking there. You think kingdom. There is no way you will not leave that level. Am I talking to somebody here today? Everything that enters your hand, enters your stomach. Everything that enters your hand, enters your life. Consume your appetite. You are not going anywhere like that. You are not going anywhere like that. That is the policy. Look at what God says. He said, don't seek what to eat, what to drink, or what to put on. For after these things of the nations of the earth, verse 29, NLT, is what the nations of the earth look for. Give us that NLT. He says, he says don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. Verse 30, for these things, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. It's a thinking. It's a mentality all over the world. But your heavenly father already knows your needs. He knows you need to eat food. There were times we came back from church in Neket. We were so poor. You know when you finish service as a pastor, two things must happen after that. Eat and sleep. Or you'll be sick. We will come back and we can't do the two. Because one need to happen for the other to happen. I say, you must eat before you can sleep. So we'll come back and lay on the bed. And just be, be, just be discussing. And we didn't feel like we were disadvantaged. We didn't feel poor. Oh, when you pursue the kingdom, no matter how hungry cash you, you will not misbehave. 
Oh yeah, bang, 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 pastor, man. pastor, pastor, uh, come do or something. Somebody will just walk to the clear with a big basin. Who's that? Who is that? You know, that's when you went to remember you didn't lock the front door. Cover your cloth in case. In case. So, oh, sister, how are you? So, but I just draw something. But I, <laughs> Shy, with shyness, she will run away. Open it. Prepare a table before me. Mende, mende. Obstacles. You move here, you hit something. Go there, you hit something. So we sit down as ourselves. <laughs> because the plan was to lie down there for a while. When we are relaxed more, we'll go and buy gari, buy sugar and salt. Add it. Help ourselves. Pending the next move of God. But guess what? <laughs> if you have not pioneered a church as a pastor, you need to pioneer one and see the brutality that is involved. How only God is your source. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Only God. We used to cook soup of three or five hundred naira a week where many guys in the house who eat it and that's all. After that soup has finished, everybody to your tent to Israel. Just look for how you survive. Anyhow, anyhow. Buy anything you want to see and survive. That's how we survive. We couldn't even afford water to drink the gari. The water was from decking into a algae and sparogyra loaded drum. None of us even had the wisdom to say, let's even wash that drum. You understand what I'm saying? That's how we drank gari. So if you see anything today, forget what you are seeing. We came from somewhere. And none of the things we see today will take our attention away from God. Give me, a, a, give me jeeps tomorrow. Give me houses. God will still by, be my ultimate possession. Ah, what am I without him? All those things, where will they carry you to? That you now forget yourself. Where, where, oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Ah, I said somebody shout hallelujah. I'm about to close. I don't know why this teaching is going the way that I did not plan. Praise the name of the Lord. The nation of Israel is one of the most prosperous in the world because they align themselves with the law of God. They know God. They know what God expects of them. I pity people who teach New Testament to discredit Old Testament. They are ignorant and they don't know where they are affirming from. Paul talked about them. There will be no new without an old. Everything they do, knew was derived from the old. The new is a better explanation of the old. The old is the shadow. The new is the substance. If you don't know how you trace the shadow, a dog can become a cat. How many of you have done tracing? In primary school? Am I trace? You don't trace nonsense. What is a dog? You are tracing it, then it became a cat. It means you added some of your own. So if the shadow you got is wrong, your substance will be wrong. They say, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. Excuse me. Do you notice that? All the revelation Paul got, he got them from the Old Testament. All. Jesus. All the things Jesus was saying. Most of them he pulled from the Old Testament. So what is wrong with people? And they have bewitched many of us. And you don't read Old Testament again. Say it's dry. Read it like that. Read it, it's no more dry. It's dry, poor water. I'll read Exodus. Read Leviticus. Those are the danger zones. Leviticus. Wherein thou art put at the table. Put at it under the lampstand. The lampstand to the northeast of the house. And the, and the oil to the southeast of the house. Make sure that thou doest it according to the pattern I showed thee on the mount. Da, 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 da. Endure. Read it. Is it the prophet? The burden of the Lord unto Syria. Syria, thou art a nation proud and arrogant. A nation that forsaketh the Lord thy God. You laughest at my people when they were suffering. I, the Lord, will laugh at thee. How does it concern you? Endure and read it. Are you on the same side? Treasure does not come out and meet you. You dig for it. Many information, you just keep digging. Keep digging till you catch it. Ah! 
if I tell you things I learn every day, I may never preach them till we see Jesus. Yes. Even as at yesterday, even this morning, things I learned, there may no, be no need to preach them, but they were for my personal edification. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. The more you read, the more you understand. The more you read, the more you understand. So Israel knows the law of God. Aligns with the law of God. As a result, Israel has one of the best economies in the world. Israel is a major stakeholder in agriculture in the world. Israel is the biggest exporter of agricultural technology in the world. Somebody leave your phone. Leave your phone alone. I will soon call your name. You know what you are checking? You say, Pastor, I don't know why my life is moving like this. It's phone. Please help us with the children. Thank you. Amen. So Israel has, let me read to you certain, I, I read in the first, this reason with all these agricultural breakthroughs they have, they hardly see rain. Sometimes they have to really pray for rain. Let me read some of the things about Israel. Israel, agriculture in Israel is a highly developed industry. Israel is a major exporter of fresh produce and world leader in agricultural technologies. Despite the fact that the geography of the country is, naturally con is not naturally conducive for agriculture. More than half of the land area is a desert. Is desert. And the climate and lack of water resources do not favor farming. Only 20% of the land area is naturally arable. That is plantable. Only 20%. Eh? Okay. In 2008, agriculture represented 2.5% of the total GDP gross domestic product and 3.6% of exports for Israel, despite the fact that they don't have land. <clears throat> Let's continue. So, so, so. While farm workers made up 3.7% of their workforce, Israel produced 95% of its own food. Its own food requirements, 95%. Please, somebody know, what, how many do we produce for ourselves? I need to know. Our governor has been singing it like a song. We need to be self-sustenance with food. He's been singing it like a song. And I know he's telling the truth. Most of the rice that was distributed during the pandemic or during the lockdown were from our own farms. A time is coming if you call yourself a rich man, you don't have a farm. <laughs> is that one a rich man? A time is coming if you don't have a farm, you'll be suffering disadvantage in this country. That is one area of investment that doesn't have, uh, the disadvantage is very low. Farm and food business, maybe restaurant, if you know how to do it. Because people die, they eat. <coughs> people are born, they eat. People disappear, they eat. They appear, they eat. I visited a man, he just lost his wife. His wife died in the hospital. When he came back, he was molding Gary as in, no matter. So me and my man, I was saying, why is he eating? And that man said, shouldn't he eat? Should he die? But your wife just died. You are eating. Agric agriculture can never be a loss. If you just know a little bit of the market. Hallelujah. Cucumber, selling like, like what now? Cucumber. Cucumber. This cucumber. What are you talking about? So Israel, 95, what they don't produce are probably things like sugar, cocoa, meat, coffee, uh, grain, and uh, small things like that. Israel. Somebody shout hallelujah. I say somebody shout hallelujah. Israel does not suffer plagues. Those are things that ruin economy. This pandemic ruined American economy, even though they are picking up. Ruined economies of the world. But they don't suffer plagues. They don't suffer natural disasters. It's a blessed nation. Why? It's a blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. Are you hearing me now? So look at nations who are the poorest in the world. Nations who are the poorest in the world. Who are they? Haiti. Chad. Afghanistan. Central, Republic, Central African Republic. 
Look at the, their religion. It will give you an idea. Haiti, 80% 80 of Haiti practice voodoo. 80%. So Satan has a field day there. India is one of the most hit country, countries with, with disasters. India. But China is the general overseer. China does not just have it, they share it. These are nations that persecute the church. They have no, no love for God. I want to go deep. If you buy the two, the two messages, you can get the full gist. But I want to say something I didn't say in the first service. Why many rich men will not make heaven? Why many rich men will not make heaven? Before I, I go further, understand that Abraham is in heaven. He was rich. Job is in heaven. He was rich. Joseph was rich. I'm not sure of Solo. I'm still researching it. Because there's what is called the sure message of David. We think it came upon Solomon. But the fact that his name is missing in the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 worries me. But Samson is there. His name is there. He made it. Samuel. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, 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 um, uh, who was rich again? David, rich. So, but there are people, the reason why many will not make heaven despite their riches. In fact, there are many that will not keep riches. They will be poor eventually. There are many that will never be rich. I will tell you why. Luke 18, verse 18 to 25. Luke chapter 18, verse 18 to 25. Let's close there. We have tried. I think. They say coffee starts from 10 now, Abby. So you can branch things, branch things. Glory to God. Amen. Where were, where, where were we? Where were we? Where? <laughs> All right. Luke chapter 18 from verse 18. And a certain ruler asked him saying, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Note, do to inherit eternal life. They don't go together. Eternal inheritance and doing. Inheritance is a function of birth, not deeds. You inherit by becoming a son, not doing anything. I don't know if I'm making sense now. So Jesus was wondering, he said, you want to inherit. If you want to buy it, fine. But you want to inherit it. Ah, it's not a matter of doing. It's a function of birth. Hallelujah. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And uh, verse 19, Jesus said to him, why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, all these I have kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, yet lackest thou one thing. Look at what he said to him. Sell all that thou hast and distribute to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me. <laughs> Then he, when he heard this, he was very sorrowful. For he was very... And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through the needle's eye than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When you go down, he said, Jesus explained, How hard shall those who trust in riches enter the kingdom of God? It's one thing for you to be rich. It's another thing to put your confidence in your wealth. It's one thing for you to be rich. another thing for the wealth to be your owner. Not you, it's owner. There are many people that are owned by the wealth. It's one thing for you to be rich. another thing for you to love money. He said the love of money, which is the wrong relationship with money, is the root of all evil. Are you hearing me? Jesus tested him at a critical point. And he said, sell all you have. Distribute to the poor. You will have riches. He said, it's not that it's a waste. You will have riches. The guy said, no, man. I didn't say, you'll be easy person to follow. I beg. Let's go for our business meeting. He left. Is it possible for you to give all you have and be poor with God? Impossible. Impossible. But that is a big challenge for many people. Big challenge. 
He didn't say, throw it away. He said, give to the poor. Because that was his problem. People are rich for themselves and he's impacting nobody. Nobody is helped. Nobody is blessed. <coughs> Me, I am my family. Nobody is touched by your wealth. That's not correct. That's, that's anti-kingdom practice. Heaven's EFCC should look for you. Am I talking to somebody here today? Who is with me? When last did somebody get something from you unexpected? If it's too far away, you know, try. There are people that should just hear from you for nothing. For what? For nothing. Why? For what? For nothing. Just it's for you. Praise God. I said, praise God. That God can share a burden with you and say, my son, I don't like the way these people are suffering. I wish something could be done about it. Lord, I can do something about it. Send me. Send me, Lord. We'll be talking about this thing, about giving to the poor. Uh, because my revelation in it is growing by the day. It's growing by the day. Some of you go and look for the poor out there. That's fine. There's a lot of them in here. Do you know that? Lift them up. Lift up their hands that are weak. The, feeble, the knees that are feeble. Lift them up. Okay? Watch people as you are sitting. Watch them. See their trousers. See the skirt. See the hair. Eh? When they carry your hand to worship the Lord. Observe. The holes in the armpit. It was spirit that moved them. They didn't know. Because their plan is this hand never goes up in church. It stays down. Nobody will leave me suffer. But you saw it. You are saving. You are saving. You are just saving. It is growing. It's not 200,000. Mm -mm -mm. mm -mm -mm. No. Once in a while, disrupt it. When you do that, God also disrupts you. Puts people under pressure to, to help you. To send you resources. Send you resources you can't dream of. And I'm, I'm talking from practical point of view. Practical. I mean, just about anybody. We will talk testimonies another day. Are you here I'm talking about? In the pandemic, they were looking for me to give me money. In the pandemic. So outside, uh, is it pandemic lockdown? Lockdown pandemic. So what about outside? And at the same time, my heart is inflamed for certain persons. Right now, what is concerning me is my pastor who pastored me for, for 15 years. He's going to be 70. If I put your name there, I'm going to put it up. We want to do something for him. Something powerful. When he was young, he poured out himself. He's no longer young. Where are the people he raised? You hear what I'm saying? I asked God, what do I do? God said, do this. I did the first half. Holy Ghost, where do I get? Yesterday, while I was broadcasting, the thing entered my account from somebody that we don't, we do not talk in a long time. The Lord said, that's it. I said, thank you, sir. Whew. I have to do something. To, the man cannot reach that age and regret that he didn't look for his own interests. Did you hear me today? That's how to live life fulfilled. You think what I gave is an expense? No, it's an investment. It covers me, covers my children, covers their children, children. It's a covenant. Who made a covenant? Onesiphorus did something for Paul. And Paul said, Onesiphorus refresh me. The Lord have mercy on him and his household. And may the Lord show him mercy in eternity. May he make it, oh God. He prayed for him till eternity. You know, we see those things and leave them. So, honestly, for us children, we come and see some mercy. And no, know that their father did something. He said, when he came to Rome, he sought for me till he found me. That's how to do it. Yeah. What is the biggest problem of the Christian or the believer? And money ownership mentality you are not the owner of anything 
you are not the owner of anything. You are only a steward, a distribution center of God. From finances even to, even to, <coughs> even to, even to things people send you. There are things people send me that I know my size. I'm looking for how to size it to my size. Holy Ghost says, how? One shoe they brought me, this shoe is so fine. This shoe is fine. This shoe is fine. I put my leg, it stopped halfway. I said, my leg must enter. My leg has to enter this shoe. Ah, ah. So, I was asking, when the Holy Ghost says, so how does your, how will your leg enter now? It's not your size. He says, so what will I do? He refused. He said, give it to somebody. I said, who? He mentioned the name. You are not a, you are not an owner. You are a container. God can ask me now, vacate this your house. Give it to so-so person. It will be doubtfulness, distrust of God for me to disobey that instruction. God can never take your house and send you to a hut. Where he will take you to will blow your mind. Because he has thought that you are too big for this, you are too small for this place. But you believe to see, you don't see to believe. Are you hearing me? So he will make you believe him first. So is it for him to tell me, empty your account that I'll be arguing? What am I arguing? How did he get there before? Am I the one that walked it there? Glory to God. The man refused. He said, it is easier for a camel to go to the eye of a needle. So I said, today I will search this, this eye of a needle thing. He did say, I should not sit down. So I said, let me search this eye of needle thing. So I began to search. In the olden in the olden days, Israel had a time they shut their gates from trade. You know, when it reaches this time, you can only enter, nothing can enter with you. And the way to ensure that is that they shut the gates. It can only carry human body, <laughs> not any trade. Same thing for Sabbath day. So that people who come to trade from other places. You know, they know that there is no way they will carry anything into Israel. It cannot enter Jerusalem because the only gate open is the eye of the needle. And I found out that the eye of the needle gate can only carry a human being as in you pass like this. It is, looks like a needle. It takes the shape of the human body. So you can't even carry anything that is bulky. Okay, so Jesus was saying, it is easier for a camel to pass through that place. I can you imagine that type of description. That a camel can pass there, which is absolutely impossible. That tells you what, it, what a man's heart who has acquired riches without God is like. That a camel can be squeezed into that space, but not a rich man because he's... Uh, did you hear what I said? Did you receive anything? So people who trust in riches put their everything. The, the more the richer you get, the more shoes you get. Richer you get, the more cars you get. The richer can you imagine the puppy? The, that that puppy after he he got you know you buy Bentley 2019. Abby. He bought Bentley of 2021 that has not yet come. How many will you drive? Nobody who sweats to make money buys like that. That's the truth. Have you gone to Dangote's garage? There are more lorries. <laughs> he has lorries than cars. Do you? This is just enter an SUV. Me, I as far as I'm concerned. Every car in my life has a purpose. They have a purpose. The one we got that is a protocol vehicle. First is church car. Two, it is for traveling. Secondly, protocol our guests when they come. So we don't come and beg you for car. You tell us brake has failed. Battery is not good. The steering has fallen out. All those things. We don't want all those kind of things. So we just release our car to carry our guests. How you see them? Hmm. Praise the Lord. 
I can me, I can never use my money and buy saloon car in Nigeria. No need. Have you seen Calabaro? What are you doing that for? Huh? Okay, leave Calabaro. What about that road? What about Enugu? And I have to go to all these places to go and preach. Are you understand what I'm saying? The governor said a few days ago, whatever you have in your house you've not used in the past six months is not your own. Look for the owner and give it to him. Gang -gang. Whatever you have, this governor talking of, that is in your house, even including your wardrobe, you've not used in the past six months. And I'm going to do my own search. Send it by yours. Send it to the owner. I'm not saying underwear. You know what I'm saying? If there's some under, an underwear, you know, one for six months should be burnt. It's in a state, a condition. That's why you didn't wear it. Praise the name of the Lord. Who is receiving wisdom here today? Why you go and package underwear and give to people? What we're saying is different. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you with me here today? How your, the economy of your kingdom works, if you know it and align with it, you will prosper. In the kingdom of God, we don't pursue food and drink and clothes. We pursue God. And food and drinks and clothes pursue us. In the kingdom of God, we don't beg, we give. You don't beg to have, you give to have. It's okay to come in as a beggar, but don't stay as a beggar. Because you never go anywhere. It's give and it shall be given to you. When we want to increase, we give to increase. When we want to fight battles, we raise altars. You must understand how this thing works. Otherwise, you'll be operating as, at a disadvantage. Your economy will improve. Your economy will explode. God will visit you mightily in your economy. Who believes God for prosperity? Are you serious? Not worldly prosperity. Kingdom prosperity. Who believes God for kingdom prosperity? Do you know that Abraham was poor till he was 75? So I don't care how old you are. You are not poor enough. Abraham was living in his father's house at 75 with his wife. In this church, we won't even let you marry. You will not even be interviewed. In fact, the engagement will not take place. Because I will ask you, what do you do? So I believe God. Where do you walk? I believe God. Where do you live? I believe God. Continue to believe God. Till. We won't even let you propose. But Uncle Ebi proposed. Live with his father 75 years. Till God told him, move. When God wants to change your life, he changed your position. Move. And he moved. And that was chapter 12. Chapter 13, God says separate from Lot. He separate. Some of you need to separate from some people. Chapter 14, he fought for Lot. And two kings met him there. The first king was the king of Sodom. The king of the world. Greed. Covetousness. Frank Edward said when he brought out his first or second album, first album, <coughs> the thing was blowing and the ex a company in South Africa, I'm sure this would have promote Big Brother and all this nonsense, called him and said to him, uh, yeah, you should be popular. I want to make you popular. Uh, remove Jesus from your songs. Just call only God and uh, we'll sponsor you. His manager wanted to take it. He went to God. God said, if you try it, that's your last. So he told the guy, I'm not doing it. You hear it in one of his songs. If you remove Jesus, what he again remain? Hallelujah. And God told him, I will, I will embarrass you. They gave him, they gave him one million. His church, they did a program, sold his record, gave him one million as his portion. Told his mother, his mother said, give it to them as first food. Because at that moment, you get that one million. The first person who approached him was who? King of Sodom. Give me your soul and take the money. That's what he said to Abraham. Give me the souls and take the money. He said, no way. Then they gave him one million. That's the king of Salem now coming. Will you pass the test? The mother said, give it to him. And he gave. Those are the two places where people miss it. 
The first place is to honor God. That's to hold on to God no matter what. You see opportunity between you and God. You chose God and left the opportunity. You pass a major test. The second is in honoring God with your tithe. What that tithe? Another name for tithe is actually first fruit as well. Because tithe is not tithe until it is the first thing you take out. Are you understand what I'm saying? It's the first. I can't, I can't, I can't spend any money for which even if I'm holding the envelope in the shop, right there, I will remove the tithe before I touch any other thing. It's to show God that he's first. Abraham gave him the tithe, or call it the first fruit. Bam! By chapter 15, verse 1, God said to Abraham, I am your shield, and I'm your exceeding great reward. That from today, because of how you behave, I am your reward. Whatever I can't afford is what you can't get. Did you hear what I said? Whatever I don't have is what you can't have. But for as long as I can have it, you have it. That's, what, that's how you transit from lack to abundance. Let me sleep with you. I pass you. That's the king of Sodom. You know what I'm saying? Give me bribe. I put it for you. That's I, I was faced with the king of Sodom. Give money. Let us clear your admission. I said, let, rather withdraw me. You must reach those points. You are aligning with kingdom principles. No matter how much it affects men here. God will eventually escalate you, explode you. Don't miss any service this month because greater things are coming. Stand to your feet with a shout. I have no other God but you. I have no other God but you. You have done what no man can do you will do what no man can I have no I have no What no man has done, do you do? What no man can do? I have no, I have no other love but you. I have no, I have no other love but you. You have done. Nobody knows it. You know it. Take microphone. Don't leave me empty handed. I am in your presence. Does it make sense? Yes. Uh, so, some songs that come, God knows the meaning of the song. Oh, you have been singing, you are my lead vocal. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
hands and thank him, everybody. Thank him. Oh, oh, in Jesus' name. Maybe you're here today and you want to make peace with God. You've not been comfortable with the way things have been in your life. You like to give your heart to Jesus. You like to rededicate your life to Him. This is a very good opportunity. Don't let it pass. You're saying, Pastor, I want to be born again. I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I want to be saved. I want to start afresh with God. I want to be sure of eternity. Wherever you are, pray this prayer with me, please. Say, Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I thank you for dying for a sinner like me. Lord Jesus, thank you for showing me mercy. I accept your sacrifice on the cross and I receive you into my life today as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Change my life. Make me a brand new person. I vow from today that I will serve you for the rest of my life. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for changing me. Give me the power to continue till the end in Jesus mighty name amen and amen